So how long do you have if you're still on Drupal 7? The end of life uh, is November 2021. Bug fixes and security fixes uh, are made to Drupal 7 until then. And then there's a plan for Drupal 7 releases uh, on, the, uh, on the Drupal.org website. If you need the content of your website to be up but not the interactive parts, you have the option to archive your Drupal 7 site. Lilibot has a blog series about how to do that. <coughs> And then starting in November of 2021, a commercial vendor extended supports program starts where you can have a contract with vendors to extend support for Drupal 7, uh, at least until November 2024. Uh, so if you're, if you're not contracting with a vendor and you're on Drupal 7, now's the time to start looking at migrating to Drupal 8 or to Drupal 9. All right, so we learned a lot from Drupal 7 and the Drupal 8 transition and changed the model of innovation entirely with Drupal 8, which should make it a lot easier for upgrading. So instead of creating a whole new branch, when we start working on this new version, uh, they built Drupal 9 almost entirely in Drupal 8. Uh, so they also continued working on Drupal 10 and Drupal 9 and so on. That's where that says 10 and then 9. So adopting Drupal 8 or 9 now, means you get on this new innovation scheme where the updates are much easier to adopt. I think if anyone has clients where you have to talk about upgrading, that's probably uh, a much easier conversation than saying, well, you got to rebuild the whole thing, which I've had plenty of those conversations myself. Uh, but what does building Drupal 9 in Drupal 8 mean exactly? Uh, first, the maintainers have adopted three me key mechanisms to allow for the innovation in Drupal 8. So there's semantic versioning, which allows for separate, separating new feature releases, minor versions from bug fixes, which are patch versions. This way you could release Drupal 8.1.x or 8.2.x, et cetera, with new features and API additions uh, while keeping backward compatibility as much as possible. This allows for adding like the media library and layout builder and big pipe and JSON API, settings tray and so on to Drupal 8 and also allowed to add new APIs to Drupal 8. Um, with that, there are scheduled releases every six months, which allows for pushing out improvements to people's sites much faster than before. So I think if, if anyone experiences life before Drupal 8, you know, releases weren't as uh, scheduled. Um, so the sooner we get feedback from people using it, the, the sooner it can adjust and make, make change directions for the code base. Uh, and that also provides a lot more incentives to contribute. And finally, there's this idea of experimental projects, so modules and themes that allowed the release of unfinished improvements where you know, the Drupal maintainers needed feedback from the community much quicker. Um, from that, we also learned about needing backwards compatibility for these experimental projects and adjusted the process as that happened. Uh, so, some people have chimed up, uh, just if you're looking at the chat, um, you know, there's backdrop CMS uh, for uh, to fork of Drupal 7 uh, when Drupal 8 came out, that people who don't want to move to migrate Drupal 8. Uh, and someone was asking, Catherine asked, we know what vendors will support Drupal 7 now after 2021. I don't know who those vendors are, but I don't know if anyone else does. All right. I'll keep going. But feel free to chime in when I, when I bring up anything that's interesting to talk about. All right, so why Drupal 9? So found ways to make a huge number of improvements in Drupal 8 and keep expanding on the APIs. Why do we need Drupal 9 at all then? Why don't we just keep going forever in Drupal 8? That's because there's a bunch of third-party dependencies, a lot more than there used to be in Drupal 7 uh, and previously. Here's some of the main ones. There's Symphony, which right now is on 3.4. Twig, which is used in version 1. jQuery, which is 3.2. jQuery UI, which is 1.12.1. And CK Editor, which is version 4. And these are our open source projects with their own schedules and support policies. 
So we need to sync up with their release schedules to keep Drupal itself supported. Now, Symphony 3.4 is going to go into end of life in November 2021. Uh, you know, we can't update, update Drupal 8 to Symphony 4 without breaking APIs. So that's probably one of the main reasons to release Drupal 9 well before that. I also don't want to fork Symphony to keep supporting it. So this means that the end of life of Drupal 8 has to be aligned with Symphony 3.4 in November 2021. In Drupal 9, I have, I have no idea when, <laughs> when the effects on the, the slide I'm supposed to show with these, with these uh, speaker notes. So we'll just go with it. In Drupal 9, we update from 74.4 and also update various other dependencies and environment requirements. So we need to provide enough time for people to update in Drupal 9 uh, before, before that. We also need to make sure the updates to Drupal 9 is much easier than before because at best it'll be a year and a half uh, to, to update sites. Uh, Drupal 9. I don't, I don't know where I am with these. Okay. Right. Drupal 9 will be released in the summer of 2020. So I think, is it still June? Can anybody confirm that? Yes. Yes, we have to beta targets. <laughs> Uh, and since Drupal 9 is going to rely on 74.4, we'll likely need to add support for it when 74.4 ends support in 2023 of November, November 2023. Um, and again, to provide enough time to update, we had planned to release Drupal 10 in the summer of 2022. Uh, so this is far in the future and all crystal ball. That being said, uh, there's an issue on Drupal.org for the Drupal 8 planning um, that you can find which is in the speaker notes for this slide. It's all speaker notes I have that. All right. So if you noticed on that last slide, that means there's going to be two major versions of the Drupal core in, a two, in two years time. Uh, so that does look likely that we're going to have a major version much more often than we used to have in the last decade. So we need to make it really easy to update them. We can't afford the hard upgrade path of Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 again. So how is this going to be done? Again, semantic versioning allows for the adding new features, new APIs to keep growing AP Drupal 8 or Drupal. But we need also to remove outdated APIs and features of Drupal. And that's only possible in a new major version. So we decide not to make surprise changes that we decided to adopt a deprecation process instead. So not only do we add new features and APIs to Drupal 8 minor releases, but we also add future removals. APIs and modules are marked deprecated for removal in the future, uh, but keep them around in order to support major versions in the major, support major version. So let's see a quick semantic, a schematic for how this looks like. Let's say we add a new solution in Drupal 8.7 for something, and we mark the old way of doing it as deprecated. We keep doing that uh, when in Drupal 8.9, we arrive at a whole bunch of new solutions and various deprecated things. Then in Drupal 9, what we do is remove the deprecated solutions for that main version alongside updating the third-party dependencies. So we're left with is all the new things that were already added to Drupal 8 earlier, and the deprecated things are removed. Now, now just this is my comment, not on the, the deck, but uh, this just means if you're keeping up with probably with your custom code that you're not using anything deprecated, which if you're using an IDE that is uh, tuned to Drupal coding standards, and you're writing something that's using a deprec deprecated method, it should tell you that. So that should help with updating any custom code. So in other words, Drupal 9.0 API equals the Drupal 8.9 API minus deprecated parts plus third-party dependencies updated. As you can see here, updated Symphony 3.4 to 4.4 and got rid of the deprecated code. 
Drupal 8 code not using deprecated APIs will continue to work in Drupal 9. So we are entirely done with removing deprecated APIs from Drupal 9 core and Drupal 9.0.0 alpha 2 does not contain any more deprecated code. So if your code works with Drupal 9 alpha 2, it'll most likely work with the final release of Drupal 9. I think when Gabor uh, first put together the slide deck, we weren't there yet. But, yeah. but he, he may have shown this graph going down, but it didn't get to zero until fourth or fifth version of these slides. Yeah. I just grabbed these slides. It's, it said they were updated on the first. I grabbed them, but maybe not if the thing was updated. Uh, also done is the dependency updates, but that's he says here it's, that's not easy, easy to gra uh, graph. Assuming you have Composer and command line PHP available, this is the fastest way to try out Drupal 9. With Drupal 8 and 9, using Composer is definitely the best practice. Um, and launching Drupal 9 this way will not require a standalone database or web server, as this uses PHP's built-in web server and SQLite database. Alert, this will look exactly the same as Drupal 8. Uh, this should be evident, evident from what I just talked about. But so you can try a Drupal 9 site using the Umami demo. And uh, that's pretty cool. I have not done this yet. I'm going to try that later. I did. And how was it? Did it look like Drupal 8? Yeah, it worked perfectly. I think uh, I think I tweeted about it when, uh, when Gabor tweeted this. So let's talk about the five steps to upgrade to Drupal 9. Uh, so I know you're thinking, OK, I can install Drupal 9 with two commands, but I have existing Drupal 8 sites. How do I upgrade them to Drupal 9 then? Number one, ensure your environment is compatible with Drupal 9. First step you need to look for is whether your environment is compatible. PHP requirements and database requirements were raised. Rush only supports Drupal 9 with Rust 10. Well, these are the main requirements. The list is not conclusive. SQLite 3.26 is required. If you use that as a database backend, if not, not if you use some other database. Postgres SQL requirement is planned to be updated to 10.x and requires the PGTRDM extension. So it looks here you need PHP 7.3, Drush 10, and MySQL 5.7. Number two. Keep Drupal 8 core up to date. So you should be doing this anyways if you have a Drupal 8 site, I would say, but you should keep Drupal core up to date. Uh, all new features and APIs of Drupal 9 have been added to Drupal 8. So by adopting the latest Drupal 8 version, you're adopting Drupal 9's features and APIs. Related to that, only upgrades from Drupal 8.8 .8 and 8.9 will be supported. Uh, when moving to Drupal 9. This is to make sure that problems updating to Drupal 9 are limited to actual problems with this upgrade path and not intertwined with possible Drupal 8 core update issues. So the best way to prepare for your Drupal 9 upgrade is to move to 8.8 .8 now, which has anybody tried to do the update from like 8.7 or 8 .7 to 8.8? There, I believe that's the one that has some semantic changes, schematic changes. We are. Config changes. It had some changes where it's a kind of a hump you have to get over. Yeah, I, I was involved in, in some of the issues where they, they worked on this. And, and the, the point was that they didn't want to maintain test coverage for all possible update paths from 8.6 to 9.0, 8.7 to 9.0. So they, they finally decided it would be easier to support if, um, if they require you to upgrade first to 8.8 .8 or 8.9, and then they can test the hell out of the upgrade path from those versions to Drupal 9. And uh, Brady chimed in that, you know, that's been the biggest black guy of Drupal 8, uh, in their opinion, is that the minor versions of 8 have been breaking. I agree with that. I don't, <laughs> I don't like it when it, you have to follow a serious number of steps to upgrade a minor version. But it's, it's way better than it used to be. It's a work in progress. All right, so number three, to upgrade your Drupal 8 site to Drupal 9, uh, update your contributed projects to their latest versions. It's, uh, you know, these are gradually adopting new APIs and removing 
uses of deprecated APIs. So by using the latest versions, you're getting gradually ready for Drupal 9, while you still have a fully working Drupal 8 site. I think there's some examples here. Um, you know, modules are getting ready for Drupal 9 in various ways. The CDN module already has a Drupal 9 compatible version, while Webform, for example, is being worked on. So look at the project pages for information on their Drupal 9 plan. Which, please, nobody look at any of my modules because I definitely don't have a plan for it. Um, so when will contributor project be ready for Drupal 9? Looking at all the contributor projects, all 9,000 of them available for Drupal 8, 44% don't have a problem found in the PHP API use at the moment. We likely only need a release marking them as Drupal 9 compatible. Um, an interactive browser of contributed project status is available at dev.aquia.com slash Drupal 9. I bet it's this graph probably interactive. So above, previously the CDN module said that their 3.4 version is Drupal 9 compatible, but the version number is 8.x-3.4. So how do we know it is Drupal 9 compatible? Uh, it's from the inf info.yaml file. So Drupal 8.7.7 .7 added a new core version requirement key that is a composer compatible version rule, which allows to add multiple core compatible information. In this case, the info file in CDN 8.x-3.4 says it's compatible with both Drupal 8.8 .8 and later and Drupal 9. So I know what you're thinking. The 8.x prefix looks very odd at this point, and that is true. And there is a plan for that as well. What that plan is, I do not know. Uh, but there is uh, drupal.org slash node slash 3070687 talks about it. I think we're going to have semantic versioning of, of contrib modules. That'd be great. <laughs> I would love that. And then you can just have like, like 2.3.1, and, and this is compatible with Drupal 8 and Drupal 9, or, or just with Drupal 9. Oh, so semantic versioning is now available for contributed projects as well. So in future, more and more project versions will be full major .minor .patch instead of having the core compatibility built into the version and only two components. Uh, so if you see uh, like the twig tweak module is doing this, for example, uh, so if you go to drupal.org slash project slash twig tweak. Very cool. All right, number four for upgrading your Drupal 8 site to Drupal 9 is remove deprecated API use in your custom projects. So we'll, pro we'll cover some tools to do this in a little bit, but at this point, you know, you have an environment that runs the latest Drupal 8, up-to-date contributed projects, and Drupal 9 compatible custom modules and themes. Uh, your Drupal 8 site will still be operational as is if you do that. Basically, you're all prepared for Drupal 9 at this point, but your Drupal 8 site is still perfectly running. Mind blown. All right, and the fifth step there is to update core itself to Drupal 9. That's the final step. Uh, since you've ensured in your previous steps that your components are all Drupal 9 compatible, as well as theoretically, uh, you should not run into any problems updating to Drupal 9. So to recap this, uh, all the steps. Number one, ensure your environment is compatible with Drupal 9. Number two, keep Drupal 8 core up to date. You need at least 8.8 .8 or 8.9. Update contributed projects to their latest versions uh, and keep track of their Drupal 9 uh, status. Remove any deprecated API use from your custom projects, so your themes and modules. And then finally, update core itself to Drupal 9 when it's available. Other people are saying do not look at their modules as well, <laughs> so if that are not ready for Drupal 9. All right, upgrade tools. Let's dive into some tools you can use to upgrade your contributed projects and your custom code. This is how deprecation looks like on the PHP API. There are similar deprecation syntaxes for services, JavaScript API, and so on. Uh, so here we have a deprecated tag uh, that points out when this was marked for future removal and when it will be removed. It also points to the API 
to use instead. Then there is a trigger error included, which is silenced by default, but will fire errors when running tests. So you can say, you know, this is true deprecated in 8.5.0 and will be removed for Drupal 9. Use this message instead. Um, I can tell you from using PHP Storm as my main editor for the last few years that if you're using a method that has this deprecated tag, it will strike out that method. And when you highlight over it, it'll tell you what to use instead. It's pretty, pretty handy. Um, recently, I switched to Visual Studio Code, though. I don't know if it'll do, I, I would think it would do this, but I haven't tried it. It does. It does. It does? Cool. I'm just getting started with it. It's yeah, I think that the, the, the PHP IntelliSys or IntelliFence module will um, strike it out, like give it a cross through. Oh, nice. So these changes, um, uh, finally, a backwards compatible implementation is provided. Um, so these changes were made to improve Drupal API, Drupal's API, and to make it more consistent. So one, the service has a defined interface, so no hunting is needed for related function files or file functions. Number two, the service implementation can be swapped for alternate implementations on like global functions. Number three, the service can be mocked for testing. Number four, the code can be auto-loaded and not necessarily in memory all the time. Number five, the implementation is more in line with the rest of Drupal's API style. Uh, the deprecated syntax is standard, so advanced IDs like PHP Storm will indicate if you attempt to use it, cross out your cross your use out, and encourage you to switch to the newer APIs. Uh, there is also for another tool is the upgrade status. Uh, Drupal check. So Drupal 8 version of the upgrade status wraps a lot of the steps we covered in the previous section. It informs you about the available contributed project updates and shows Drupal 9 plans for projects used on the site. You can also scan project code for uses of deprecated APIs and find deprecated API use in PHP code, Twig code, Drupal libraries, info.yaml files, and so on. So here's a little uh, screenshot of that. Um, what that shows up is this, yeah. Uh, then there's upgrade reactor. Uh, well, upgrade status would report the use of deprecated APIs, Drupal reactor, and it's UI upgrade reactor. Rector. What's that? Rector, Rector not reactor. All right. I I can't read. It's fine. Rector. <laughs> will produce suggested fixes for deprecated APIs. So that was this writing, only rector implemented for this is for Drupal set message. However, palancier.net is leading the effort to cover more of the APIs. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Based on what I saw at MidCamp, that's um, sort of aspirational at this point. It's, it's not really um, a powerful tool yet. Well, unless you have a lot of Drupal set messages. Um, e even then, it, it'll put in a, a Drupal service of, of um, Messenger. Um, it, it won't actually do the dependency injection for you. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's only so somewhat helpful. Um, the best way to make sure your code will run in Drupal 9 is to run it with Drupal 9. Well, you can try manually. The best is if you have adequate test coverage and run your tests against Drupal 9. With beta 2 available, this should be possible. And no tests or not enough coverage. Uh, you can at least run the PHP deprecated API checker, uh, PHP stand with Drupal CI on your project. One way to use this is to keep an issue that runs this and work away at the found deprecated API uses. This will not find deprecated Twig API uses or info.yaml file incompatibility or deprecated library uses yet. Uh, so make sure to run this with Drupal 8 core in your project as Drupal 9 does not have the deprecated APIs anymore, so they will not be identified. Uh, Drupal.org runs PHP stand on the latest version of contributed modules, so you can get an overview of all of them. Unfortunately, this data is not exposed on Drupal.org in a user-friendly way, but dev.aquia.com slash Drupal 9 has an interactive tool that allows you to dive into all projects deprecation issues down to a specific problem found. That's pretty cool. 
Most problems can be fixed now while keeping in mind supported core releases. While some may not be fixable yet, you know, if you want a multi-core compatible release or need a separate release branch for Drupal 8.8 .8 and Drupal 9. Keep in mind that some projects may need a new branch to support Drupal 8.8 .8 and 9 and onwards. So 8.8 .8 was the latest branch to deprecate APIs for Drupal 9 and thus includes all new APIs introduced for Drupal 9. However, Drupal 8.7 is supported until the release of 8.9, so contributor projects that want to work with all supported core branches cannot yet remove Drupal 8.8 Drupal 8.8 deprecated API use as a replacement would not be available yet in Drupal 8.7. What that means is these projects either need a custom workaround solution added, you know, their own wrappers or bridge APIs, or individual branches maintained for Drupal 8.7 and Drupal 8.8 plus, including Drupal 9. So we are here. All right, let's talk about some of the new features in Drupal 9. But before I dive into that, does anybody have any comments? No, All right, I, I can keep going. New features. New features. So there are, there are no new. So said earlier that there are no new features in Drupal 9, and that is true. But Drupal 9.1 onwards will continue to introduce new features, uh, though, and go on to stabilize existing experimental modules. The big deal about Drupal 9 is that it should not be a big deal. So the easy upgrade path is the greatest new feature of Drupal 9. Uh, this is what you always wanted. Uh, so shiny new features would be great. So let's talk about some of those too. Workspaces. The existing workspaces experimental module will is planned to get stable and be generally available. Has anybody used workspaces? Neither have I. I tested it out. It worked pretty good until it didn't. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, there is a question. Uh, is there a reason to upgrade to 8.9 if you're on 8.8 .8 before going to 9. Uh, Drupal 9? I'd say it's always good to upgrade to the latest version of Drupal uh, just because of there may be other minor fixes involved. Um, all right, other things, help topics. The currently experimental help topics module aims to refocus Drupal help on task-oriented text instead of module-oriented summaries. Stabilizing this would be would help a lot to provide better user guidance. Let's take a look at that. The Claro administration theme is available as, oh wait, I, I thought this would go into that. So I have no idea what help topics is. Does anybody use help topics? I do. All right, Benji, inform us. I, I, I've, in fact, been looking at that for a couple of years now. Um, and, and two people have been behind it, Jen Hodgden and Amber Mainz. Um, and it's now in Drupal core. It has beta status. So it, it's going to survive the transition to Drupal 9. Um, they are busily writing documentation in the new format. Um, personally, I think it's kind of embarrassing that we are still writing hook help where we're pasting strings together. And that's just a horrible way to create strings in, in, in Drupal in this day and age. Um, and and, and the, the help topics module is going to let us write our module documentation in twig files, which is a step forward. And, um, and it, it provides an API um, so that you can have other ways. You could have um, config-based help topics um, that could be managed by your site administrator. And they would show up on the main help page along with um, all, all of all the module-based help. So anyway, it's currently in beta. The, the current work on it is 90% writing that documentation, giving us more task-based documentation than, than the existing module-based documentation. Um, and when, when it gets to a good point, we're, we're going to rip out 
all of the implementations of Hook Help and replace them with the uh, with, with the new help topics. Um, but that won't happen until at least 9.1. Hmm. And I, I did a little bit of work on that at MidCamp too. I'm moving on to the Claro administration theme, which is available as a beta experimental theme in Drupal 8 and 9. Once it gets stable in Drupal 9, it will also be possible to make it the default administration theme of Drupal 9. The 7 theme will be removed in Drupal 10 uh, at that point. I've started using this theme a bit. I, I like it. I think it's a lot cleaner. I don't know if anyone has any other opinions. Sorry, which theme is it again? Claro. Claro. Okay. If you haven't tried it out, definitely if you have a Drupal 8 site, try turning it on and, and see what you think. Uh, a new front end theme called, I always say this wrong, Livero? No. Oh, Benji, do you know how to say that? I imagine you know how to say it. I think it's Olivero. Olivero. All right. Uh, it's proposed to be added to Drupal Core and Drupal 9. Once it lands in Core, likely in Drupal 9.1, it will take some time to stabilize. Uh, it will replace Bartik as the default theme of Drupal. Bartik will also stay around in Drupal 9 and will get removed in Drupal 10. Hey, CK Editor 5. CK Editor 4 will go unsupported around Drupal 9's end of life. So we'll need to either include CK Editor 5 in Drupal 9 or research, identify, and implement a new WYSIWYG editor. Uh, CK Editor 5 is a big departure, departure from CK Editor 4, and, we'll, and all integrations and widgets need to be rewritten for it. That said, it provides a lot of exciting possibilities, including collaborative editing, assuming a server is um, assuming a server component. That's pretty cool. So that's supposed to you. Uh, also, whatever you come up with, the Drush maintainers are discussing getting a, in an official command line tool to Drupal and so on. Propose ideas in the Drupal core ideas queue at drupal.org slash project slash ideas. Um, and you can check, uh, WebCheck has a, a tweet on Twitter that is a thread of for some uh, key ideas people would love to see in Drupal 9 and onwards. Uh, the Drupal 10 initiative will need to start shortly after Drupal 9's release candidate or Drupal 9.0.0. Uh, and there'll be a lot to do before Drupal 10 is released two years later. It's crazy. We'll have a major release, two major releases in two years. All right. So when will it be released? We don't know yet, but there are a few scenarios. So beta two is already available. Release candidate one, week of May 4th, and then stable uh, June 3rd. Uh, you can go to drupal.org slash core slash release dash cycle dash overview. Uh, it has all the dates on it. Uh, and then 9.1 stable around the end of the year in December. All right. In summary, Drupal 7 to 8 slash 9 is the last big step. Drupal 7 will have vendor extended support to provide is provided until the end of 2024. Drupal 8 to 9 is the easiest upgrade in a decade. Uh, so just keep up with all Drupal core, 8 core and contributed module projects. Remove your own deprecated API use with tools. And when all components are ready, upgrade to Drupal 9. That way you're getting ready in your Drupal 8 site before you move to Drupal 9. And Drupal 9 will continue to get exciting new features. So to read more and discuss status contrib projects, dev.aquia.com slash Drupal 9. The official documentation, which I'm sure probably needs um, a lot of support and help, is drupal.org slash docs slash 9. And there is a D9 readiness channel in the Drupal Slack, which has meetings every Monday at 7 p.m. Um, UTC time.
Thanks. I'll thank Gabor for putting this together. And if you want to check out these slides yourself, this is where they're available. And I hope I didn't do too bad of a job uh, reading that, <laughs> for the reading it blind.